Acer not too long ago was one of the first laptop manufacturers to realize that there's a huge group of professionals that buy their gaming laptops, but not just to play games. They use them for professional applications like video production, animations, photo editing, and more. And that there is even a decent percentage of them that buy gaming laptops and don't play games at all. This guy. So they decided to not just create a laptop aimed at this demographic, they decided to create an entire lineup and brand around them. Laptops in every size, desktops, and even a super color accurate monitor were all announced at once under the new name Concept D. I was actually in the audience when this was announced, and because I very much am the user in question, I remember muttering to myself under my breath, finally. Now, it's been about a year since Acer told us about their idea behind Concept D, and I have here what essentially amounts to their monstrous crown jewel of that lineup, the Acer Concept D9. And since they let me borrow it for a bit, I figured I would try to do a complete walkthrough on it for you guys. Now, if you're not familiar, a complete walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device, so you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there is a lot to go through. So, let's get started with the hardware. Firstly, it's not small. The laptop might have a 17-inch screen, but that's the display itself. Add to that about an inch of bezel on either side, along with these hinges beyond that, and you're really looking at like a 21 inch, 22 inch laptop. It's to the point where not only does it not fit in my backpack like my 15 inch does, but it barely fits in my carry-on luggage. And at just shy of nine and a half pounds, it'll probably push your checked bag a little over the airline limit too. Now, because of all this, it's less of a portable powerhouse and more of a desktop replacement that you can easily move to the conference room or around the office, in my opinion. The entire chassis is made out of aluminum with just some plastic around the screen. Speaking of, we have a 17.3 inch, 16 by nine, 4K LED backlit IPS touchscreen display. And one of the party pieces is the fact that that screen is attached to two metal hinges and allows it to be positioned in a number of ways, like a regular notebook, flipping it over to show clients or collaborators what you're working on, and Windows automatically flips the screen when you do that, by the way, to laying it flat or propping it up as an easel and everything in between, since the hinge mechanism actually feels super solid and wherever you put the screen is where it stays, even if you're touching that screen. Those last two positions and the sturdiness of it all come in quite handy when you opt to use the included Wacom EMR pen that, by the way, magnetically attaches to the top of the screen and does so pretty snugly, might I add. If you aren't familiar, Wacom is basically the de facto stylus company for professional creatives that do any sort of drawing in their job. So it's nice to see Acer use a tried and true manufacturer that is familiar to them for this almost essential tool for some versus trying to create their own. Again, since this is a laptop aimed squarely at professional creatives, Acer made sure the display was validated by Pantone, the company behind the Pantone color matching system, a widely used standardized color reproduction system. Now, without delving into that too much here, suffice it to say that Pantone certified essentially means that when a designer is looking at a specific Pantone color on their screen, that it's guaranteed to look like that color when it's printed using the same matching system. In addition to this, they also managed to achieve an average of delta E less than one. Now, delta E is the difference in a color compared to real life. The lower the number, the closer it'll be to the real life color, basically. And lastly, for all the screen testing, they also claim to cover 100% of Adobe's RGB color gamut, which for anyone using Adobe's creative software is just another way of ensuring accuracy. And at the top of that screen, we have a 1080p webcam that looks and sounds like this and also is apparently Skype for Business certified, which just means that Microsoft has certified it to work well with the Skype for Business app. Beneath that screen, we have what looks like the speakers, but actually is the exhaust vents for the dual fourth generation Aeroblade 3D fans, as Acer calls them. The speaker, of which there are four of them, actually took me a sec to locate while playing audio. They're under the front edge, it seems. And that's because they do a good job of bouncing the audio at you where it sounds a bit like surround sound, in my opinion, which is kind of crazy. The keyboard itself is a proper mechanical keyboard with an amber glow that you can adjust using function plus F7 or F8. The fact that it's mechanical means that it is super clicky and I really enjoy typing on it, frankly. You will just have to keep in mind how close you sit to your neighbors as again, because it's mechanical, it makes a bit of noise, albeit less than others that I've used actually. 
My one gripe about it is that the right shift key is super tiny and crowded by other keys that also kind of seem out of place to me. So I found myself hitting page up a lot out of muscle memory for where a larger shift button would have been, for example. Of course though, that's something you'd probably get used to. That keyboard is also offset to the left to make room for the trackpad on the right. The pad itself is smaller than most nowadays and also has physical buttons under it for click and right click, which I'm sure has something to do with maybe them being more accurate, but frankly, if Mac can make an accurate trackpad and a magic trackpad, etc., I feel like Windows OEMs should be able to do that as well. No, truthfully though, any creative, myself included, refuses to use a Windows trackpad while working and opts for an external mouse instead. And Acer seems to have thought about that, at least, as the trackpad has a neat trick when not in use. It can be turned into a number pad for easier number crunching. And you do that by double tapping this button here. Now, the only thing is, is that it is kind of this touch sensitive group of buttons now. And well, it's just not the same as tapping real keys. So just keep that in mind. Now, making our way around the laptop, we have every port ever, basically. On the left, we have one USB 3.1 Gen 1 port, a separate 3.5 millimeter audio port for microphone and for headphone, which is nice, and a USB 2.0 port, maybe for legacy peripherals. I'm not sure why they didn't just put another USB 3.1 port in here, but there you go. On the right, we have an end lock to lock the laptop to a workstation, for example. The power button, one USB 3.1 Type-C port that also doubles as a Thunderbolt 3 port, another USB 3.1 Type-C port that also supports DisplayPort over USB-C, another USB 3.1 Gen 1 port, and a killer Ethernet E3000 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet port. But that's not all. Around the back, we have a proper DisplayPort 1.4, an HDMI port, and the port for the AC adapter. Now, I kind of like that they chose these specific ports to put on the back, by the way, as it means that when you're at a desk, the cables that go to the wall outlet or to your extra monitors are all hidden from view. For connectivity, we have a killer DoubleShot Pro adapter built in that offers Wi-Fi 6, and we have Bluetooth 5.0 support as well. Inside this monster, we have a 9th gen Intel i9-9980HK 8-core processor, and that is also paired with 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, which is, by the way, user upgradable, but the maximum that the computer can utilize is 32 gigabytes. For storage, we have a one terabyte PCIe NVMe SSD that is also user upgradable. Graphics wise, Acer didn't skimp there as you would expect, considering it's aimed at 3D animators, CAD designers, video editors, etc. We have an NVIDIA RTX 2080 GPU with eight gigs of GDR6 VRAM. And as I've used plenty of laptops in the past with this GPU and even less capable CPUs, it handles whatever video footage I throw at it, even in full resolution with color corrections, etc. And for anyone curious, here are some common benchmarks on it so you have something to use to compare it to other laptops at least. Now for the battery, we have a 71.9 watt hour battery in here that Acer claims will last about 2.5 hours of Wi-Fi use. So let's do a very unscientific test and see how close we get to that. Now, keep in mind that that's without engaging the very power hungry GPU really. And so if you do any work on this using that, you can expect even less battery life. Again. All of this furthering my use case of a desktop replacement that doesn't travel too far from an outlet. For software, we are running Windows 10 Home 64-bit and have a decent amount of pre-installed, what I would consider at least, bloatware. This includes a few games, a Dropbox promotion, literally called that in the app list, and some others like Norn Antivirus, which I find quite annoying, frankly. But thankfully though, as with all Windows laptops, you can easily right-click in the start menu on any of these and uninstall the ones you don't like. Besides these though, Acer did add some useful software to the computer. We have Waves Max Audio, which is an app to adjust the equalizer for the speakers, as well as enable 3D audio when using headphones. There's the Acer Care Center, which is Acer's own app for memory and storage optimizations, updating of software, recovery tools, etc. We have a very basic voice recording app also included. And because of the killer brand Ethernet and Wi-Fi, we have their own app for monitoring and optimizing network traffic. And there you go. The Acer Concept D9 is available now with two models. The one I have here with the specs I listed already for $4,999. And there's a pro model that swaps out the RTX 2080 for a Quadro RTX 5000 and the one terabyte storage for two terabytes. Now I'll leave a link below to the best price that I could find on the laptop for anyone interested or if you just want to learn more info about it. 
Now, personally, I really like using it. It just feels super solid. The GPU CPU combo handles basically whatever my video workflow can throw at it. The keyboard is super satisfying, etc. But it's not for me. And not just because of that $5,000 price tag. It's also because I need that power for sure, but I need it to be able to go with me whenever I go places. Now, also, I'm not the demographic for this period anyway, mostly because of the portability I need, but for other reasons as well. I mean, the rotating screen is something I don't really need. The pen is something I don't need, etc. It's definitely meant more for designers, 3D modelers, people that have to sketch are working in a professional environment where they can probably leave this at a desk most of the time, etc. There you go, guys. Rundown, walkthrough, Acer Concept D9. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this laptop, about this video, the length of it. I'm still trying to improve this as best as I can. Was this too long, too short, etc. In the comments below. Always love hearing from you guys anyway. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching.